Hello everybody and thank you for coming to another nature story time. This week we have just a fun silly story for you. It's got some really good animal facts in there too though um, and it is in preparation for next week which is Valentine's Day where we celebrate all of our friends and family and significant others, people that we love in our life and show them how much we care. So our story today is called All Kinds of Kisses. It was written by Heather Swain and illustrated by Stephen Henry. And I challenge you, I think there are some hearts hidden, or maybe not so hidden, on all of the pages of this book. So see if you can find the hearts in the illustration um, as we go. And then at the end, there are some really fun animal facts about the animals we see in this book. So I'll read through those as well. So here we go, all kinds of kisses. Humpback whales have gigantic mouths to gobble up great gulps of shrimp. And through all the bubbles, mamas give cuddles and big wet canoodles to calves. How would a humpback whale kiss? Daddy Sun Bear has a lovely long tongue for lapping up honey from hives. You're so scrumptious and yummy, I'll nuzzle your tummy. Yippee, the baby replies. How would a sun bear kiss? And we learned in a recent story time that their tongues can be up to eight inches long, so that's a pretty long tongue. Red crossbill birds have twisted beaks to tweeze tiny seeds out of cones. That's how they get their name. That way or this, asked Granny Crossbill while pecking a quick, crooked kiss. How would a crossbill kiss? The piranha's maw has a fine jutting jaw for nibbling on fish fins and fruit. I'm coming in for a peck on the chin, says Papa Piranha. You're cute. How would a piranha kiss? Know about you, but I might skip a kiss from a piranha. Oh, those sharp little teeth. Several quick flicks of Mama Anteater's tongue will clean out a mound of termites. After a snack, hop on my back for a quick kiss and then it's good night. How would an anteater kiss? Mm, those ants are making a special shape. A grasshopper mouth opens east-west, but not north-south. They're like scissors for chopping up leaves. Don't try to hide from a kiss on its side, says Grandpa Grasshopper to nymphs. How would a grasshopper kiss? So a nymph is what we call an insect that's not quite an adult yet. The flexible lips of a giraffe twist to pull leaves off very tall trees. Please don't be fickle over a little lip tickle, says Grandma Giraffe to her calf, who giggles and wiggles his knees. How would a giraffe kiss? The sweet little tree frog has no lips for a snog, but her tongue shoots out like a spring. Stand back, says her mother, cause one way or another, I'm getting a smooch with this thing. How would a tree frog kiss? What a cute little mouth a pink porpoise has, just perfect for plucking out fish. Pucker up, says Aunt Porpoise as she swims by the bay in search of a fine, dainty kiss. How would a porpoise kiss? With tongues shaped like straws for slurping sweet nectar, hummingbird chicks are in for a treat. While flitting through flowers for hours and hours, Mama kisses them lickety-split. How would a hummingbird kiss?
A creep chub sucker has soft, flappy lips to vacuum the riverbed. So their bottom feeders. Mwah, mwah. Says Uncle Chub Sucker, who gives a big pucker and plants one on baby's head. How would a sucker fish kiss? Duck-billed platypus has a flat snout for digging up yabbies and grubs. Come here, little puggles, it's time for snuggles, says Papa Palatipus, giving out hugs. How would a platypus kiss? Did you know that a baby platypus is called a puggle? Because that's about the cutest thing ever. With so many choices, how will we decide the best kind of kiss tonight? Should we nibble like fishes, or peck like birds, or grasshopper kiss from the side? Whichever it is, this much is true. When we say goodnight, I love all kinds of kisses from you. Ooh, these are all different animals that we didn't even see in the book. Fun facts. Let's read through some of our fun facts in here. The mouth of a humpback whale is about one third the size of its body. Well, imagine if your mouth was that big. Babies spend almost a year nursing and swimming near their mamas. Although sun bears are the smallest kinds of bears, they have comically funny long tongues for getting honey from beehives, insects from trees, and termites from mounds. Sun bear cubs hum while nursing and cry when they need attention from their mothers. Crossbills, that red bird, use their cross crisscross beak to pry the scales off pine cones to get at the hidden seeds up inside. Since they feed the seeds to their chicks, they can breed any time they can find enough food. Hmm, interesting. Piranhas are freshwater fish that use their powerful teeth to eat both animals, like snails and fish, and plants, like seeds and fruit that fall into the water. Mother piranhas can lay up to 5,000 eggs, which are cared for by both males and females, so most of them survive until hatching. Anteaters have very long snouts and powerful tongues, but no teeth. They can slurp up to 35,000 ants and termites every day by flicking their tongues about 160 times per minute while feeding. Whoa. A baby can hitch rides on its mother back on its mother's back for the first year of life, but then it has to walk. Unlike our mouths, a grasshopper's mouth is turned sideways and has two sharp jagged jaws that work like scissors to cut up all kinds of plants. Grasshopper mothers lay eggs in pods underground that hatch ten months later. Baby grasshoppers, called nymphs, look like miniature adults. How many of you have seen a grasshopper nymph before? They're pretty fun to find in the summer. A giraffe's very long neck, flexible lips, and acrobatic tongue help it reach leaves, flowers, and fruit on tall, tall trees. Mother giraffes stand up when giving birth, so newborns fall nearly six feet to the ground. But they are up and running within an hour. A tiny green tree frog has a long, sticky tongue that's attached at the front of its mouth and curls backwards so it can catapult out, snatch up an insect, and get back inside the mouth and all in less than a second. Babies hatch from eggs as tadpoles and transform into frogs in about eight weeks. Pink porpoises, river dolphins that live in the Amazon, are born gray, then become pinker as they age. Their long snouts have lots of powerful teeth and tiny hairs outside to help them find and catch fish and crabs. They live in small family groups of up to five to eight dolphins, with babies staying near their mothers for two to three years. A hummingbird's tongue has two tubes that open when they reach nectar. These tubes zip closed as the bird pulls its tongue back into its beak, trapping the nectar to be swallowed. Mother hummingbirds usually have two chicks at a time, and she feeds them by squirting nectar or dropping tiny insects into their beaks. Creek chub sucker fish have, have soft, squishy, downward-facing lips that they use to suck up little worms, plants, and tiny crustaceans from the sand and rocks on riverbeds. 
Females produce about 9,000 eggs per year. Once they hatch, the babies form schools, then swim off alone when they grow up. Duck-billed platypuses only live in Australia and look like a cross between a duck, an otter, and a beaver. The bill is actually a muzzle covered in a leathery skin that can detect the electrical currents of snails, frogs, worms, and little crayfish called yabbies. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they made that word up. Unlike other mammals, platypuses lay eggs, then secrete milk that gets lapped up by the babies, which are sometimes called puggles. Those are some pretty fun facts. So that's our story for today. Just a fun book for Valentine's Day. Um, so tune in soon for another new nature story time. Bye-bye.